Okay, this video shows how to use the fake FPGA simulator on a Windows computer at home. So you're going to go to this uh, release page, and I'll put a link to this in the description. And you're going to want to download this uh, DESIM win32.zip. Now, I've made an empty folder just to keep all this stuff organized. Um, you don't have to, but I recommend you do the same. Uh, actually, I haven't made it yet, so let me make it now. So I'll save that. And you're also going to need this U of T scripts folder, which I'll also save here. Uh, so now extract all of these. By the way, how come no zip extraction tool has a extract and delete archive button? Like, that's all I ever want. But anyway, get rid of that. So to first thing you're going to want to do is just start the GUI. We'll get that out of the way. So you go into DESIM132 GUI and just uh, double click this run.bat. And you're going to have to do this more info run anyway. Um, and with any luck, this GUI should come up. And just for your information, if you open up a command prompt and type Java version, um, you need this to be, you need uh, this number to be 11 or higher. Um, if it isn't, you need to install a newer version of Java. Uh, okay, so now the next thing to do is just create your course project. Oh, by the way, the GUI, just leave it open. All right, don't close it. Even if you start and stop your, uh, your simulation, just leave this GUI open for as long as you're working. So inside uh, Cordis, let's just make ourselves a new project. And I'll just put it in that folder that I made just to keep my computer have some semblance of organization. You can call this project anything you want, you know, my super great project or something. And just leave it empty and you can just like mash next here and click finish. The default options are fine. Now you're gonna wanna create a new Verilog HDL file for this project. And you can save it as, uh, I like to call it main.v. Now, by default, Quartus looks, okay, so hold on, hold on, hold on, sorry, I got ahead of myself here. So in this U of T scripts, there is a template that you need. So open up this lab template.v and just copy and paste this into your file. Right. And then you can just write the code for your lab in here. So I'm just going to do a little example. It's going to be um, uh, assign LEDR 0 equals um, switch 0 XOR switch 1, for example. Okay. So notice that in this lab template, uh, I have named the module main. Uh, you have to leave this name because the simulator and the GUI um, are going to look for that name specifically. Uh, but here's the thing, Quartus, um, you can see here in the hierarchy, it's it's trying to look for an entity with the same name as the project. That's what it does by default. So we're just going to go into assignment settings and tell it to look for main as the top level entity. Uh, okay, now we want to compile the simulation. To do that, you're going to go tools, tickle scripts, add to project, and inside this U of T scripts, there's this compile sim.tcl file. So just open that here. And now to run this, you have to just click it once here inside this list and then click run at the bottom. Uh, with any luck, that will go without errors. Although I will mention that if you like forget a semicolon or something and you have a syntax error, it's going to show up inside this uh, processing window here um, with all the messages in it. Um, but anyway, uh, that will be done when this, these two green check marks appear. Um, 
and I think we're okay. So in theory, now we're done with Cordis. So if you go into your Cordis project folder, there will be this new folder here called simulation model sim, and in it, you need to have this main.vo. If that's not there, it means it didn't compile or you're looking in the wrong place. Uh, so the next thing you need to do is go into U of T scripts and get copy some files. So we're at home on a Windows computer. So we're gonna copy these three files into that simulation model sim folder next to main.vo. Uh, and now with any luck, we should just be able to double click run sim.bat. Oh, protect and protected your PC, blah, blah, blah. So the first time you run this, you're gonna get this uh, big comment right here. Remember to fix the path command. Edit the first line of this file to point to the correct folder. Also, I don't know why all this stuff is up here. That's kind of annoying, but. Uh, edit the first line of this file to point to the correct folder where model sim is installed. And it, says, it should say something like Win32 ALOEM at the end of it. Afterwards, you can delete these annoying echo statements. All right, so you gotta go in here and edit it as a text file. All right, so there's this path command. Up until the semicolon, you need to put the path to model sim on your computer. So um, on my computer, uh, oh geez, hmm. where would that be? I think I installed it. Oh yeah, yeah, right in here. So in, in the Cordis installation folder, model sim ASC, uh, 132 ALOEM. So this is the one you want. So copy that address. And then you're just going to put it right here. And then after you've edited that, um, you can just get rid of all these commands. They're sort of annoying. And then just save that file. All right, so now we are ready. Oh, I closed that folder for some reason. So now inside that simulation model sim folder, you can just double click run sim.bat and the indication that it's working is you see this run dash all at the bottom um, and then just leave this terminal window open. Now we you get a message here that says connected to simulator and as you can see our uh, little design that we made is hooked up properly to the lights and stuff. Um, when you're done with the simulation, you hit stop simulation. And this window will stay open, but you're gonna get a press any key to continue here at the bottom. And just hit enter and that window will go away. But don't close the simulator GUI, just leave it open. One last thing, if you don't wanna edit this batch file every single time for every new Cordis project, just take this edited one and uh, go back up here to U of T scripts, Win32, copy these files, and uh, just paste your, whoops, I don't wanna run that. Um, I wanna edit it. Oh, okay, oh, it's unsafe to edit it. All right, anyway, um, and just take that edited one and just paste it in here. And then that way, when you copy it the next time into a new project, it'll already have all the changes. Oh, let's get rid of this pause statement at the bottom. Um, that's what causes the command window to stay open uh, even after you're done running the simulation. Uh, all right, so there you go. That's about all you need to know. And